Hey everybody! Well, that was way louder than I expected. I, I, I thought about how to summon the sound. Hey everybody. I did not expect... I don't, it, it, like it, it hit like a resonance point in the back of my throat. I don't know, you, you ever like, uh, you, when you're in a cave or something like that, which happens more in the movies than in real life, I suppose, and you go like, uh, and it echoes across the, the rock wall. I just did that in my throat, dude. My throat's like a cave. Let's not worry about the implications of that. Um, Kane, of course. We did do, uh, I, on stream, I managed to beat Greedier as Tainted Lost, which means we literally have Tainted Kane, Greedier, Tainted Eden, and a lot of Tainted Jacob. Um, <laughs> you gotta do it at some point. Tainted Eden, we only have one more thing to do, so I'm gonna preserve that little nugget uh, of of progress. And then Tainted Kane, I want to do on stream as much as possible because the you know it, it helps to have uh, some assistance, some sous chefs, if you will, to help you uh, check the recipe. So, we want to go Mega Satan Dark Path. I can't believe that in, in actuality, we're one... I mean, it's got to be a good run, don't get me wrong. We're one good run away from being one run away from being tainted... Beating Tainted Jacob. Oh, wait, we have Tainted Lazarus still. Freck! <laughs> I forgot. Anyway, early HP, good, good for sure, but you you very rarely die due to just running out of red hearts as Tainted Jacob. Usually you become the lost, and then you gotta take it from there. It's the Eternal D6. If we're gonna do Mega Satan, that means we're not going to... Uh, we're not gonna go to our Devil Deal. I'm just trying to... It's actually been a couple of days since I played Isaac, which it happens now and then. It is a Friday, TGIF. It's a lot of HP, man. It's, it's not bad early on. It's not bad. Uh, but yeah, but you know, I... On stream, been playing a little FTL, which is a ton of fun. Been playing uh, a little Gungeon, which is a ton of fun. I talked about my philosophy for that stuff in these... Uh, in Isaac videos, you know? Why, uh, if... Everybody seems to be of the opinion, and I actually agree for once, rather than needlessly positioning myself as, like, the streamer who, you know, disagrees with all other streamers to be different and cool. Uh, I actually agree with this one. That we're in a little bit, just a little bit, just a wafer-thin kind of gaming drought. Um, which for me has been a good opportunity to go back and play some 10 out of 10 games from... Frick. My, uh, I was gonna say my childhood, but, like, legitimately... I don't know, I think I was like 28 <laughs> when Gungeon came out, so... Not really my childhood, and I don't know, FTL, I was like, uh... Came out 2012, I was, I was probably 23. I got a late birthday. That's all, I, I'm gonna split hairs on that one. I sent my friend a really weird message last night, it's been, it's been playing over and over in my head. I'm stupid, I tried to do a stutter step dodge there. Um... He, he has, uh kids already but he had uh, his his third child worth worth where we're going down um he had his third child a couple of days ago maybe maybe literally yesterday but he told us uh that it was in impending a couple of days ago anyway long story short sent us a picture of his baby very cute everything went well always good to hear what did i say well i said all that stuff then after that, I said, it's crazy that I have a nine-month-old and you have, like, an eight-hour-old, and yet in 14 years, they're going to be the same age. Which, honestly, is, is true in all ways but the literal, you know? Like, uh, the, the, right now, sometimes we'll see a baby when we go on, like, a walk outside or something like that, and the baby will be like, I'm so stupid. <laughs> the baby won't say that. That would, ironically, that would be a very smart thing for a baby to say. I'm so stupid. You'd be like, "Whoa, the, your, your syllable work, <clears throat> kind of crazy though." Anyway, you'll see a baby. The baby will be like very, very recently born. You know, within the, the first month or so of its uh, of its existence, 
And I'm like, man, that's I, I feel for the parents, you know? Because it's a, a special time, but it's also a very... Uh, it's a stressful time. That, that whole period is kind of a blur. Maybe I'm the weirdo, because the next thing I think to myself is like, uh, in like a decade, they're not going to be different age. They're going to be like the same age. I know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> What's the nugget of, of realism here? Well, as you get older, minor differences in when you're, uh, when you were born, you know, kind of get smoothed out. But the other thing that's worth noting is that, like, when you're born, there's a freaking huge difference. I thought that was on my solo. Saved. Like, right now, our daughter is, you know, on the verge of, of pulling herself up to stand. She's making, like, deliberate syllabic sounds. This is a spicy room, man. Um, she's showing, she's laughing all the time. It's great, but, you know, in that first couple of months, you're really just, like, you know, just getting through the day. It's just kind of... Like, a, it's just, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. You're like, you're like an organic robot. You're kind of like, I mean, I'm not saying this about babies, because I was a baby once myself. Don't take an insult to it. But, you know, the first couple of months of the newborn, you're, it's kind of like a really, really high stakes Furby. Or Tamagotchi, if you will. You know, it's like a Tamagotchi that like, you know, yes, you have to take care of, not just for, people always say like 18 years, but like, you know, for the rest of your life. But that first couple of months especially is literally just like, you know, an, a, a push alert comes up that's like, I don't know, do something. And you're like, uh, feed me? Okay, I'll give it, oh, and that's not it. Diaper change? No. Bath? Oh, absolutely not. No bath, etc., etc. It's just wild, you know, how much, uh, how, how fast things can change, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Should probably just kill, uh... Tainted Esau here while we got the opportunity. I don't know why I thought I would release you there. Sure, that's going to make this a lot more fun. Um, let's let's leave. And I'm going to try to kill you on a room where maybe we can get a... Uh, we can get some money there. But I think I'd rather fish for a second secret room by trying to kill you right here. Anyway, it's not one of those comments that's like, you know, it's so weird we're never going to speak again. But... When, when I saw that uh, in our group chat, people had seen the message and nobody had replied yet, I was like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I think the, the proper uh, response to seeing cute photos of, uh, you know, your, your friend's new baby is, uh, wow, cute baby, hope you guys are doing okay, that's amazing. And then that is what I said, but I did not stop there. I said, crazy how I have a nine-month-old, you have like an eight-hour-old, but in 14 years, they're going to be the same age. I think if I had more time to explain the way that I phrased that, he would be like, he would at least hit me with a ha-ha, yeah, and be like, it's kind of like not that relevant to the situation, but that's okay. <clears throat> Wait, this is Curse of the Blind. Curse of the Blind, we leave. Anyway, so that's been turning over and over in my head. Also, did you see the photo of, um, it's an edited photo, obviously, of uh, George Costanza, but with his head fully shaved and he has a, a, a cool beard? I've kind of been psychologically scarred by this. Uh, George Costanza with the male pattern baldness horseshoe, clean shaven? That's not me. George Costanza shaved fully bald with a beard? Actually, like, it's not one-to-one, -one, but you could be, like, if they made... <clears throat> still a little early here. If they made my life into an NBC sitcom, absolutely, Jason Alexander circa, you know, 1996 could, could definitely play me. That's, it's a scary thought realizing, you know, you've, you've grown up watching Costanza thinking you were maybe Jerry. Nah, man. You ever notice this says Isaac at the bottom? That whole time you were watching, you were watching Seinfeld thinking you were the main character? Nah, you're the, you're the plucky, uh, bald comic relief. I just, I, you're not supposed to handle that room like that, I'll tell you that much. 
Lucky me. So what is the game plan for us on this run? Well, <clears throat> it's a good question. Eternal D6, I actually really like. Unfortunately, like as of right now, the main thing we got going for us is that we have a, a lot of HP. Although we, we actually, now that I think about it, don't even get the HP that we picked up from the last boss because we were the lost when we got it. I think the dream, I'm, I'm remembering like how I did that last really good, this is fine. How I did that last really good Tainted Jacob run. And I think uh, that a big part of it was honestly Satanic Bible. I think Satanic Bible allows you to get deals with the devil. I mean, first off, it's just a good defensive item that's a little less relevant as this character, but let me out. Thank you. Uh, but then also, it has the added benefit of giving you... Help, help me, I deserve this, but that's okay. Why would you stand there twice? I don't know. It has the added benefit of giving you uh, deals with the devil from your boss room. You can become the lost by getting hit by Tainted Jacob and then pick up the devil deal for free and have the doubling effect of also, not worth it, um, not having to lose your angel precedence. So you can use Satanic Bible. It, while we're while we're talking it out here, you can use Satanic Bible to get deal with the devil items without losing your deal with the angel chance. And we do want to fight Mega Satan, so this all makes perfect sense. Uh, now, are we likely to get? Why not? Uh, are we likely to get Satanic Bible? Honestly, we're not likely to get it. But you and I both know we're not that... Whoops. But we're not going to play anyway, probably. Um, we're not that unlikely to get it. It shows up on... I don't know, probably like 25% of runs at this point. Especially with the Eternal D6, basically. I'm stupid. Basically, I'm stupid. I no longer commit to uh, the idea that this run will survive. <laughs> Now I am exclusively uh, looking forward to the next run. But let's break out of that bad habit. Because you got that 33% angel chance. And you've got a... This is an okay place to, to blow you up, I think, as well. It, we might be able to find a secret room here. Maybe not. We, we should go back and get the consumables as well. But... Sometimes you just gotta send it, man. Um, but with Eternal D6, if we get an angel deal that we don't understand, which probably describes about 45% of them, we could always try our reroll. If we get an angel deal... It, it took out the Bomb Beggar, which is actually good, because I was not gonna play it. But I thought it was any time you blow it up, it was just gonna, you know, explode with more bombs. So I think we got a little lucky there. Or we learned something new, rather. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not optimistic anymore, any longer here. But uh, we, we could return that optimism just with one good pill. Hey, well, with one good deal with the devil, for sure. Or deal with the angel, I should say. Um, like, if we can get... The, the dream is obviously Godhead or Sacred Heart, but there's so many uh, angel items. Like, maybe this could be... And I, you'll, you'll have to forgive me. I, I am heavily engaging in the imbibing of copium right now, as people are so fond of saying these days. Uh, but what if we got, like, revelations, you know? What if, what if we got that ability to fly... Does give you some HP, but we wouldn't be able to take the HP because we're the lost. But the the big thing is that that brimstone laser. You think? I don't know. I'm I'm optimistic right now. I know I said I lost all my optimism, but now like immediately upon remembering, there's literally like one percent of the items in the game can save us. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to believe again. Let's just hope. We're able to get through this. I, I chose to spend three bombs there just because, like, I mean, come on. Come on. 
maybe shouldn't have taken the the item, but I don't know. Hierophant's okay. Is he, now that I think about it, is Hierophant actually okay? Probably not as this character. We need we need to focus more on the things that would actually save us, which I think is re-rolling for like those super high yield items. Might become the loss to get that money there. Instead of just like, oh, you know, good enough. Because uh, we're, we're really at a point where I'm like, we're on the fourth floor and we got nothing going for us. I mean, like, wait, what's the positivity that we have on this run? We still have a lot of HP, but because we keep becoming the lost and not picking up anymore, it's not that impressive. It's starting to, to dwindle. You got to remember as well, I'm sure this has been said about mm, a thousand times. But as... Hold on. What about this? What about this Eddie room? As uh, Tainted Jacob, Tainted Esau can only move in the cardinal directions. It's true. You may not believe it, but it's true. It's a great uh, floor to become the lost. So many things we can only get by, by flying. Uh, so if you can only move in the cardinal directions, you know, that's something... I, I don't think that's a tactic you uh, learn academically and then just apply it as a potential reroll. Rubber cement is not, like, in and of itself that amazing, but the, it, its interaction with other tier effects makes me very interested in, in how it could work for us here. Uh, by the way, I, I will also say I was, I was mistaken... Because that was not a cardinal direction. That was on the 45s. This is really bad. Sometimes you just gotta accept that you're gonna take the damage. We do have to come up with a... Wow. Um, we have to come up with a strategy. Because if I get hit by another enemy, I lose my great angel deal chance. You're gonna think I lost it. You're gonna think I lost my mind. This is what we're gonna do, though. Why? I think we want to be the lost in order to maximize our angel deal chance. You know, it, I, I don't realistically with our current default damage and, you know, relatively default rate of fire, uh, I, I don't really love our odds of uh, not taking another hit en route to the boss fight and including the boss fight for that matter. So I think it's for the best for us to, to become the lost. Um, I do also think, you know, it, it's very reasonable uh, to assume that we would lose after being the lost, by the way. <laughs> All we have to do is get hit one single time, um, which now makes the most dangerous enemy in the game because of the way that the balance has been done in Repentance. The most dangerous enemy in the game is your own avarice. If you get a little greedy and decide, hey, you know, it would be a lot of fun. What if I open this chest without waiting to see if a freaking ghost pops out? All of a sudden, you're the... You know, you find yourself looking at the... the wrong side of uh, the game over screen. It's a lot of money, though. So, obviously, like, we can't play the Eddie room this way, but that's okay. What do you got for me? Pear throw? I still think Isaac's Fork maybe for the future is good. Uh, Perthro is really good. That would be like our first target on, a, on an Angel deal, which we do have a two-thirds chance of getting if we survive here. And I'm just, I'm begging, I'm begging you for an item with even the slightest utility here. And now I'm realizing the error of my ways and I'm, I'm not begging for material possessions anymore. I'm begging merely for, a, you know, one last gulp of, of oxygen that allows us to stay alive just a little longer. You don't need to worry about all that stuff. You don't need to worry about your brimstones, your mom's knives, your revelations, your godheads, your uh, holy lights, your crown of lights, the Cleveland steamers, the rusty trombones, etc., etc. All you gotta do is concern yourself with one room at a time. <clears throat> so, I 
think you have to take the glowing hourglass. And then I'm going to use Perthrow on these, actually, which I know is not what I said I would do. However, glowing hourglass, and now this is like a tragic Romeo and Juliet style story waiting to happen. Glowing hourglass, though. After we get through this floor, and I, I'm saying after, not if, because I want to... I, I want to believe. It's the power of positive thinking. Oh! Um, if we get hit and become... the lost, I think we can just turn back time. I never even thought of that as, like, an opportunity here. Something that we could do, uh... You know, I, I've always thought about how to overcome the challenge rather than just avoid it altogether. Except for that eraser run, which was like a dream come true, but... This is potentially, like, actually great. I thought I died. I, I came to terms with my own demise. <laughs> I, was, I was ready to start spinning you a yarn, but unnecessary. Okay, just don't like this room. So we will be leaving. With Anima Sola and 10 bombs, like it's actually very easy to imagine a world where we make it through this boss. Can we beat the angel statue? That, I mean, that's got me a little spooked, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know, you might take issue with this. Wouldn't it be hilarious? <laughs> oh my god, that was... that. It had no right being that scary. Okay, we, we are gonna, I guess, take Placenta, even though it doesn't do that much for us. Uh, or, or anything for us. I don't have a choice, quite frankly. I think I have to fight you, and I think I have to take this item. I also can actually use bombs and shoot now, which is nice. I'm glad I did. I'm not saying we got this, but for I'm surprised by the fact that I feel like there's a chance. Let's put it that way. This would be an, an impressive uh, potential win for me. So what what's the plan? Well... I'm realizing it's not as simple as I thought, okay? Because we can... Th this is like, you know, we, we just had an awesome uh, victory where, like, I feel good about myself, and then now we're bringing it back to Earth. Uh, the problem is that, yes, if we get hit by Tainted Esau, we can roll back time with the glowing hourglass, but we can't... Sure. Uh, we, we can't really roll back uh, a situation where we kill Tainted Esau. If he hits us, we could just be like, okay, redo. I hate these enemies, man. This is like, if you, honestly, if you ask me to describe how these enemies move in, like, just in words in the English language, I don't think I could do it, and that's scary for me. It's like they go around in a circle, but if they have line of sight on you, then they start to, you know, target you instead. But also, they have no eyes. So how do they have line of sight? Okay, we... I, I want all that stuff. I'm just being... <laughs> I'm just trying to preserve. Ooh, my angel chances and stuff like that. That was amazing dodging. <clears throat> Luckily, and, and it's luck in, like, the most humorous, ironic form of the word. Um, luckily, it's fairly unlikely that we're going to kill Tainted Esau unless we desire to. And the reason for that, we're just rolling back our, our devil deal chance there. The reason for that is because our damage sucks really bad. I like this. You know, we don't really need the other one. 
Um, I think I'll get out of here for now. I do want to... This would be a good run to donate. We, we got a lot of donation potential. Wouldn't mind having two charges. We, we definitely do need to get our item room as well. I also... I don't know if they give out, like, a, an honorary award every year. Like, a Nobel Prize for using bombs in The Binding of Isaac. But if they do, I really think this run's gotta... Gotta be... Close to the top of the list for, like, the best bomb usage I've ever had. Okay. Just, just chill. Just chill. Not bad. Mm, still not bad. We, we can, we can persevere here. We can still persevere. This is, like, the exact opposite way that you're supposed to fight the haunts. By, like, perpetually staying uh, right next to him. Staying in line with his attacks as much as possible. <laughs> I'm, I'm going back on all of my training. In my defense, I'm also trying to dodge Tainted Esau the whole time. Just cross, just... That would have been unfortunate. But you know what? We would have just had to use Glowing Hourglass. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. Just had to fight him again. We get another chance. No deal with the Angel. <clears throat> we have to look for the item room. I wish we didn't. I, I wish we could just steamroll this one as quickly as possible. Um, but we, we have kind of an obligation here, I think, to... To do it. And I, I really don't think we want to be the lost. If we can avoid it. There, there's some situations where there's a lot of advantage there. I think this is like the exact opposite. I think there's a there's a lot of potential strife. I'm not re uh, or not re-rolling, but I'm not rolling back time on that. I gotta remember, I, I think our chance of winning with Glowing Hourglass is like so much higher than without it, but uh, we gave up something for it. We got to make sure we use it as, as properly as possible. I don't know. I, I feel like the, the strategic aspects of my Isaac brain are coming online. Like someone on stream the other day, and, and this is, it's a nice comment. They, they left a comment that said, old and uh, 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 only golden chests, I think. Or yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, old NL would have smoked new NL when it comes to the actual gameplay. But new NL would smoke old NL when it comes to the banter. Very nice uh, comment, for one. And I'm being very sincere. For me, as a, as a human being, especially like, you know... Increasingly realizing um, the role that I play in the online content ecosystem. Much more uh, flattering for me to be decent at talking. Whether you agree or disagree, my efficacy has gone up or down. Um, much more flattering for me to be the guy who's a little worse at the game, a little better at talking. But I kind of disagree. There, there's a few really impressive runs... That I did when I was, uh, you know, trying to grind out the rebirth posts and stuff like that. But uh, I, I definitely think maybe like my my dodging. I don't necessarily think it's gotten worse. Really, really not happy. I went all this way for the pokeball, but um, but there's been some some impressive runs in repentance on top of the ones that maybe I did seven years ago when when rebirth first came out. But on top of that, I think that my like strategic awareness of what happens in the game is substantially higher than than it's ever been quite frankly uh there were a lot of runs where i was just and i still have this personality trait within myself but very stubbornly just like eh, you don't need to learn about like the mechanics as long as you just send it still certainly i would say i uh i feel that same sort of emotion and i i can hear myself saying those words but maybe, maybe I'm a little bit more open to help now. 
I really don't want to donate a bunch of money uh, while this guy's chasing me down. But that's exactly what we're going to do. Just really, as, as much as you're willing to give, let's just take you to 400 for now. Okay. Still waiting on, like, a, a, a damage upgrade. Yes, we could become the Lost and then go get those red hearts, but... Uh, still waiting on a damage upgrade. This is the floor, man. This is the floor, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to play this. Oh, thank you, Egghead, as well. Um... That's not great, but it not not worth IV bagging. We actually did get something out of it, which is if we play a blood bank in the future, we won't get an IV bag. But yeah, you know, I I think that some sort of delusion is necessary for self confidence. I don't I don't know what the spirit of confidence is. I'm you know, everybody I think is confident in some aspects of their lives and not uh, confident in others. Everybody's got some degree of imposter syndrome. If you don't, I actually that's way more of an indictment of your personality, uh, in my opinion. If you don't have any amount of self-doubt, that scares me. Like if you're the if you're the Lake Wobegon example where you're like I, I'm I'm above average at everything. How can you be above average at everything? The last time I thought I was above average at everything was probably when I was like a high school senior. Six months later, I was, you know, in my freshman year of university, calling my mom, trying to figure out how the heck you, you heat up a can of soup. You know, if, if you think you're good at everything, it's quite plausible, in my opinion. I, I don't know, maybe you are just a superstar, but um, it's quite pl uh, plausible, in my opinion, that you just live in such a narrow existence that you don't get introduced to much stuff that uh, you aren't good at yet. I didn't say you aren't good at, just that you aren't good at yet, you know? Because uh, this stuff all takes practice. Driving? Oh, man. It takes practice. I've never been uh, in a car accident. Uh, I've been driving... I was, I was going to say I've been driving for, like, half of my life now, but that's not really fair. I've had my license for half my life, but then when I, after I got it, I went to college, didn't drive very much. After college, I went to South Korea, didn't own a car, moved to a city where I took public transit everywhere, and then in, like, 2015, started driving more again. Um, but I, I consider myself, let's not say above average, because it's a weighted term, but I consider myself certainly um, a driver of sufficient care and skill in order to, uh, you know, drive safely. Don't need to use a bomb. That, that, it's tempting, but, like, we have so much money right now. Our bombs might be a more precious resource. You don't start out, I think, as a... Maybe some people do. Maybe some people start out as a good driver. Um, I didn't really, and, it, you know, I, I think it's just natural. Definitely, I remember driving in, in downtown Kingston, Ontario once. I was probably 16, maybe 17 years old. And my dad was very displeased with the way I was driving. And he said, it, like, after... Uh, you know, probably like one too many lane changes where I made a bad shoulder check or something like that. He was like, pull over, like, I'm going to drive us home. Very embarrassing moment. But you know what? You, you get, you, you persevere from that uh, anecdotes like that onwards, which doesn't, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Where's this bit going? I don't know. I'm just so happy that I've like entered a meditative state, kind of, and can actually like, play Isaac while not exclusively trying to spin a yarn about how we're dodging this guy over and over, that uh, I was kind of leaning into it. I guess where it comes from is this idea like, um, I think online, and, and I think, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to phrase this that is not younger people, because I know that uh, it, anytime you start a, a bit with younger people, you're like in, in prime boomer territory, right? Uh, hold on, hold on. I'm just thinking... Because there is a five room. We gotta, we gotta try to find the tinted skull. Then we can get out, use the five room. I know that there's forget-me-now. Are we really gonna... 
get rid of this glowing hourglass. I know we haven't used it much, but I feel like it's one of those things you don't use it much until it saves you. But I, I don't, let me rephrase this, because I don't feel like it's the younger generation. I actually just feel like it's literally when people of any generation are younger. You know, you, you don't go outside as much as you are introduced to the outside, either like culturally or, you know, through the news, through television, through, you know, stuff you watch, stuff you read, stuff you listen to. I think there's a compulsion, if you will, to like especially and school is kind of similar in this as well i think hold on we i, I was just gonna say i know we got a, a very blessed rotation here that's not so blessed that's okay um we should have used hematemesis uh when we were on one heart my mistake so now instead we're just very lucky quite frankly i can't remember what the magician is let, let me go to platinum god we got 12 different lines of reasoning going in my head right now. Ah, it's the soul for like, for a room or for 60 seconds? 60 seconds, okay. Might as well pop that. I'll, I'll see how I feel. That's pretty good. We, we might have to get rid of this trinket soon though. Um, I'll see how I feel about all this, um, all this forget-me-now stuff. After we get through this fight. I really hope we get an angel deal. <laughs> if we don't... We possibly... You... A common misconception in Isaac. You... After the first devil deal... You can look at Devil Deals without compromising your future deal uh, option. Which is to say... If you look at like maybe the fifth floor, you get a deal with the Devil. You don't want to look at it because you want to preserve deals with the Angel. Just looking doesn't carry a penalty. That's unfortunate, but I think we, we have to send it. And we're doing Dark Side Path. Don't accidentally fight Delirium. It, that opened the boss rush door, which is really funny, but we absolutely have to come in the angel deal instead. Um, and we want the key piece. This should work. Now, we actually would love to see deals with the devil. So the first thing we're going to do is fool card. Then we gotta think, man. Are we really gonna... You know what? I'm gonna base my decision based on what I think the community would like to see. And what I think the community would like to see is a forget-me-now play here. So we'll do the, fi the five room, then we can forget-me-now after that. And we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, five room first. Okay, so this is going to be a long one, but that's okay. Anyway, the whole point of my bit there was... And I, I've been there, you know, as a teenager who was online too much. You just uh, you spend too much time, you know, thinking about what the world is going to be like. You, you thought about something like driving for ten years before you do it for the first time. You do it for the first time, you make a mistake in the first half hour. And you go, oh, oh no, maybe I'm just bad at this. I do be feeling elusive, by the way. I think we should probably dump this trinket for a bit. We need some more keys. Um, I'm here to tell you that I think uh, that that's the plight of being innately kind of half-decent at most things you try. I relate to that idea of... Uh, I hope this doesn't seem like a flex because it's quite the opposite. Um, but I relate to that idea of being like a, a kid who was good enough at school that I never really had to try that hard until maybe college in order to to get the kind of grades that would make me or make my parents happy. Um, and as a result, you know, the, the when when you're so used to like, hey, you learn the multiplication table or something like that, I don't think I want that. 
and you, you pick it up faster than many of your peers, and you think to yourself, like, I'm just a genius. And then, you know, they take you to woodshop class, and you don't immediately know how to put together, like, a birdhouse. Uh, because, of course, you don't. It's a multi-step process involving tools you may have never used before. Um, your initial hunch is, ah, this isn't for me, I'm not good at this stuff. When in reality, I think it's just a complicated thing that requires some practice. I, I honestly thought we finished that room. And it's uh, not a hot button issue, but it, it comes up now and then, like when I used to talk to, I need the glowing hourglass, we didn't get it! Um, when I used to talk to people about programming, uh, that I got stuck on the, on the pot. <laughs> when I used to talk to people about programming, occasionally they hit you with like the, yeah, I tried it for like two lessons. And then we started learning about integers, and I just decided, like, oh, I, I just don't get it. I don't think my brain works like this. And I'm like, hey, look, if if my brain works for something like programming, a very detail-oriented pursuit, and I am not a very detail-oriented person, then I think, uh, I think you're getting down on yourself unnecessarily. I think you just got to give it a little extra time sometimes. So I do want... That's that's pretty good. I, I forget that key. It's not worth the risk, man. Forget the... For, forget... No, don't forget. Don't... F okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to... I kind of want to get my trinket back, but, you know... I think with four keys, this is fine. Don't, don't hit me, don't hit me. Get Anima Sola out. You know what you're doing. Now that we have Proptosis, we actually have a really good run here. Just wanted to see it. Now that we have Proptosis, we have a really good run. We could pop the Fool at any moment. Or the, uh, sorry, the Forget Me Now at any moment. Love that, love that, okay. In order to get to safety, like maybe we decide. This run needs a little bit of help. Not right now. So we already took the negative. Why? Oh, did... I don't see it in my item list. Oh, yes, it's right there. So we will take the Polaroid. You know what? I, I hate to do it. Why don't we just take the negative? Why, why complicate it? It's stacking up more damage for you. You only benefit from that. You, you're not going to ever use permanent Polaroid invincibility in all likelihood. So, realistically, from this point onwards, what does this game look like? Genuinely, that's, that sucks, but I'll live with it. Um, I think, still fine as well, that what the game looks like from this point onwards is maybe killing the Lost, or killing Tainted Esau right away every time. Um, or trying to get through the boss fight as quickly as possible and maybe if you play your cards right you're not all dead oh because of the because of the skull obviously maybe if you play your cards right you can beat the boss before tainted esau shows up obviously uh, you know what would freaking slap here you know what would slap here what if we got blank card, which I'm realizing is completely plausible, maybe not likely, but plausible, uh, candy heart. Hold on, every time we pick up red hearts, we, we get a stat upgrade, right? Not, not a big one, but still. Blank card. Trinket smelter. We don't have a spacebar item, so <laughs> I'll take it. Um, and then I'll take this, apparently. And then it's... No! <laughs> it should never do that, but at least we got some good comedy out of it, maybe. I will open. If you could just chill out, let me get into this. Sure, Hero's Medallion, also known as Consolation Prize. Range stat, which is already infinite, is also somehow low. I... Didn't think we were going to make the squeeze there, but we did. Stars card, no thank you. Okay, we, we've done we, we've done everything we expect to work for us here. Uh, 
Am I mad? Slightly? But it's my own fault. He died. Okay. And he opened boss rush. <laughs> Again. Okay. I keep forgetting. Um, I, I don't know what Proptosis Ipecac does, but I'm I'm gonna stay away for that exact reason. We're gonna we're gonna use our Emperor card. It's a weird run. So I think all the door. Oh, is that what you feel elusive is? Is just all doors are open for you, no matter what? Because if that's the case. I actually think this is one of the best upgrades we could possibly get. Thank god we got that other key piece earlier, huh? Because this gives us, a, I would say, a very, very realistic chance of beating the boss, or at least getting through most of the floor, before Tainted Esau shows up. And the number one thing I'm worried about versus Tainted Esau is just killing him in like an inopportune time. Two spirit hearts. Basically guarantees, in my opinion, a deal with the angel or devil on the next floor. I'm starting to think we have concocted... That's fine. Uh, a tainted Jacob run that can actually win. Genuinely. Please let me out. <laughs> Please, thank you. Don't get cocky. I definitely for sure believe... We have a great chance of being able to get uh, through the lamb. Mega Satan, I don't know. This is such a, a weird but also amazing synergy. Like, to just be able to walk through every single floor, it's the dream item for me. <laughs> now remember, just don't get hit by Tainted Jacob. Getting hit by the enemies is not that big a deal. Certainly not as big of a deal. We'll, we'll just take Godhead, if you don't mind. Then make sure, yeah, we're going to go down. We're going down on this one. This is the run. We could still lose. There's The mechanisms for losing are very obvious. I don't think we will. But it could happen. That's the boss? Bit surprising. <laughs> the heck are you doing in the middle of the of the floor? Very strange. Dude, are you seeing the damage we're doing though? Remember, just don't get hit by tainted Jacob. If you get hit by He he just spawned, that's so good. If you get hit by the other enemies, it's okay. So for now, I know you're going to be like, open that stuff up. I will not open that stuff up yet. Um, if we become the lost, we can take uh, those for free. But we have to do it one at a time. Why am I fighting you? I thought maybe we could at least beat that room. I don't know. I really don't know why I'm fighting you. I guess just because I'm here, I know that it's a little safer to do it now. But we don't even have to fight you on the way back. Then again, it only adds like an extra... <laughs> Half a second to the run to kill you, and maybe you get a, a couple of items out of there. I don't know if this was right, but it's the way we chose to do it. It's not like we were going to kill Mega Satan before Tainted Esau either, you know, spawned or even died, so. Meat Cleaver. Yo, 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 this, this means we win. Because Meat Cleaver, actually, I think we can just do it right here. Meat Cleaver means you don't turn me into uh, the lost when you die. I'm very, I'm very proud of myself. I just have to be honest. This run probably never should have made it to this point to begin with. We, we probably should have died on maybe the third floor. But instead, we're about to probably easily beat Mega Satan as Tainted Jacob. And... Uh, did we get carried? Kind of yes, but also kind of definitely no. <laughs> Until very recently, this run was not spectacular. I'm not taking any of that. Are you crazy? Like, 
You've got the dream tainted Jacob run. You you don't uh, you don't do anything. You don't you don't mess with it in the slightest. Absolutely beautiful run. Now, did we get up to any banter? No. However, maybe this throws a little uh, this throws a monkey wrench into the idea that I'm worse at the game than I've ever been. These are also characters that like the only characters we have left are like the most difficult characters in any roguelite uh, ever. How did uh, probably Egghead? I mean, meant that we didn't get hit there, or maybe Elusive, or is I guess Elusive is just uh, is just the doors, which honestly like was un unbelievably valuable for us. This is kind of a joke. How easy this is. I'm I'm a very happy man. <laughs> we do have Proptosis uh, Godhead. Trisagging, whatever the the heck uh, the pronunciation is on that. But I'm I'm very happy with myself here. I'm also very happy that at some point in the past, apparently we beat uh, Delirium. Wow. Uh, which means that all we have left is Greedier, I think, which is going to be its own ball of wax. Don't get me wrong, but there you go. For now, <laughs> thanks for watching. Unlocked RC Remote and Golden Trinket. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!